I come back. I know love looks mysterious to a lot of people. And because of that, there is so many lies going about. I said it in um, some of the other episodes that unfortunately there is no institution where marriage is taught. That is not. Yet marriage is the only institution where they give you a certificate first, then they tell you to go and learn. Let me say that again. There is no institution where marriage is taught. Yet marriage is the only institution where they give you a certificate first, then they push you out and say go and learn. And because of that, there is no school where they teach you Mary, I went from primary to tertiary. They didn't teach me about being a good husband or being a good lover boy to my wife. The only husband they taught me is animal husbandry. After I've been married for one hour, I knew animal husbandry won't work in human husbandry. I don't think there's a school of wifery. I know there's a school of midwifery, but that's about delivering a baby, not about being a good wife. So the question is, <clears throat> how do we learn the truth about love? And I said it earlier, you know, um, the Bible said that let the older woman teach the younger woman to love their husband, which means love should be something that is taught from generation to generation. But unfortunately, we have generations now that have never experienced love. We have mothers that don't know how to love their own husband. How can they teach the younger woman to love her own? We have fathers that didn't love their own wife. How can they teach their sons how to love his own wife? That is where the problem is. And because that is a major issue, we have a generation now that does not understand love and to make it worse. The social media, the Hollywood, the Nollywood, the Bollywood, all of them, because they also believed in the lie, they are propagating the lie. The 10 lies I'm talking about today, some of you, I believe, one or two of them, or you know people that have. And that is why it's very good for you and I to come together and say, is this true? The thing about institutionalized lie, what do I mean by that? A lie that's become an institution is that once you believe that kind of a lie, it's difficult for you to even know it's a lie until somebody debunk or demystify the lie for you. So what we're trying to do is to do that. We can't listen to Hollywood or Bollywood. You know, in Hollywood, a lot of them, their marriage does not even last. Some change spouse more than people and people change their boxers. Yeah, you know, Britney Spears, one of my favorite actors actually got married on the, um, went on honeymoon divorced in 48 hours can you believe that 48 hours he was married he went on honeymoon he was divorced i'm just thinking some of the wedding gifts before it arrived <laughs> he had divorced can you can you imagine that i mean so when people like that now act love for you you can't afford to believe that you know this Taylor married 12 times 12 times to 10 different men. So when people like that act love for you, you, you can't take it serious. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. So we need to understand what real love is. So number one, I said last week that a lot of people believe the lie that love is majorly to be endured and not enjoyed. That is a lie. I know the Bible made us realize in 1 Corinthians 13 that love um, 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 does not keep a record of evil. Love endures. Love bears all things. But that is not what love is about predominantly love is to be enjoyed more than endured that will always be a part of it you will have to endure but listen to me very carefully there's a lot of enjoyment in marriage i've been married for 22 years and i know my parents have been married for 53 years and it's exciting both ways so i'm trying to say to you and that's why i'm challenging you if your marriage is working put it on social media you know why on social media, what people see is that love is not working. Somebody's divorcing, somebody abusing one another, somebody confessing that the car I said my husband bought for me, it is me that bought it. Somebody confessing that, look, we always fight every night, though we, we, we pretend as if things are fine. Now, if that is what this generation keeps on saying, they will believe that love is a myth. They will believe that love is a lie, and it shouldn't be so. So I'm appealing to you to please make sure if yours is working, show it out. Number two, we, we we saw that some of you believe that if you really love me, you sleep with me before uh, before you I, I marry you. That is also a lie. It is a lie because that is not the plan of God. You see, love and sex are not synonymous. If love and sex are synonymous, every prostitute will be a lover because prostitutes they sleep they have sex for a living. It can be so. God said you should not sleep with one another before you marry. There is a reason for that. One of the reasons for that is that once you start to sleep together, you suspend your senses. The vital question you need 
to ask before you marry, you are not asking it. Number two, if somebody has slept with you, only a stupid man will eventually pay for what he had used for free. If he has slept with you, most of the time they don't go ahead. Number three, a man that cannot wait to sleep with you does not love you. What he has is a loss. How do you know the difference between lust and love? Lust is the desire to be pleasured by somebody or something. Love is the desire to pleasure something or something. Let me say it again. Lust is a desire to be pleasured. Love is a desire to pleasure. So if somebody is putting you under pressure to sleep with you, you must know automatically this is not love, this is lust. So it's not love and sex are not synonymous. Number three, true love is love at first sight. Mm -mm -mm. That is a lie. True love is not love at first sight. True love is love with insight. Let me say that again. True love is love with insight. When you see somebody for the first time, you can't even know who they are. There are materials, there are things I saw for the first time that are drinks. When I saw the container, I was very excited. Like Genesis 3 6, what Eve said. When Eve saw the fruit that put all of us into trouble, he was delighted. He thought, look at the way she described it in Amplifier. He thought the food was good, suitable, pleasant for food and it is to be desired in order to make one wise and she took the fruit and ate and gave it to her husband but that fruit was our downfall because love at first sight does not, is not the real thing number four some lies that in-laws are the major problem in marriage that is a lie Absolutely. I told you last week that I don't believe in illogical problems. I believe in a weak man and a stupid woman. It's a weak man that opened his eyes up to in laws, and it is a stupid woman that opened her eyes open to the to the in laws. So it's not about in laws. Some in laws may behave like at laws, but you should know how to handle that. And I said something. All this prayer, God, I want to marry a man whose mother has died. Stop praying them because you yourself we have a son, and somebody will pray that for you because what you sow you reap. Then I said today you might have a mother in law. Tomorrow you will be a mother in law. Make sure you get it right. Then let's stay. And another lie is that true love never fights. That is a lie. If two people disagree, only one of them is doing the thinking. True love will have its own disadvantage. Two people cannot always see things the same way every time. I'm, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know if you get what I'm talking about. If somebody will say the cup is half full, and then we say the cup is half empty. They're saying the same thing, but they're talking from the perspective of nurture and nature. So I'm trying to say to you, be very careful of that lie. That well, if we have a disagreement, that means maybe we don't love one another but i said something last week you need to get i said maturity is the ability to disagree and yet hold hands can i say that again maturity is the ability to disagree and yet hold hands that is very very important number six true love is for compatibles yeah some people believe that you know if we really love one another then we must be compatible everything must be the same we like to eat the same thing wear the same thing go to the same place wake up at the same time sleep at the same time what a lie don't believe that lie in fact most of the time opposites attract in love that is not only a law of magnetism that is actually also a law of life if you know Jesus chapter 5 verse 2 say male and female created in them and blessed them so I believe God made male and female to attract one another opposites attract many at times you need to understand that God made us differently but he blessed us equally can I say that again God made us differently but he blessed us equally so that the other party does not behave like you behave sometimes don't think like you think sometimes does not mean they are not blessed of God they are just blessed differently and all that let me explain this to you Many a times a good marriage is a marriage between a man that says, if the light is off, I can't sleep. And a woman that says, if the light is on, I can't sleep. It's between a man that loves to eat his food very hot and a woman that loves to eat her food very cold. It's between a man that can give away his life and a woman that has super glue in her hand that whatever she touch does not move. <laughs> Oh my word. Because you see, I jokingly say both of you are givers like that. We'll get to your house one day and we say, Well, um, BB, where are the children? And you say, Ah, the children. Let me tell you something, Daddy. It is the neighbors who they've been married for seven years, they don't have children. So me and my husband just agreed that well, since we have four, let's give the four to them, then we start again. But you see, if one of you want to give your children away, the other one should be able to say, Mba, God forbid, not to fear that, not be a you. You can't do that. So I'm trying to say to you that in true love, opposites attract. What we need to do is to find a common ground. You see, it is differences that add color to life and marriage. It's differences. If the whole world is the same, if we are all the same, dressed the same, 
talk the same, walk the same, live the same, this world will be very, very boring. So the God that does not want us to have a boring world had made us different. So you are different, I'm different, everybody is different for a purpose. Don't force your spouse into your mold. No, true love does not mean we have to be think alike, talk alike, do things alike. That is not the plan of God. So, number seven, lie. This is very, very important. True love is hard to find. Have you, have you, have you had that before? I see that, I see that on social media. I see it on Instagram, I see it on Facebook, I see it everywhere. I hear it even from the pulpit. I hear people say that to find true love is almost impossible. In fact, one of the old philosophers said something very profound. He said, to find money is the dream of peasants. To find true love is a dream of kings, princes. Let me say that again. To find money is the dream of peasants. To find true love is the dream of princes. And it looked like that. But let me explain this to you. I know because when when my pastor, I'm, I'm close to my pastor, um, close to him in every way, including age. When my pastor was to get married, um, and she picked a lovely wife, you know, Reverend Victor and Jumaka I mean, we love them so much. And when Reverend Victor picked a lovely wife in Pastor Jimmy, you know what people said? They said, uh, you see, uh, uh, Pastor Jimmy had picked the, the one of the few good loves available. Reverend Victor had picked one of the few good loves available, so obviously there are no more. When my generation, my son, Busui, Papa, um, my friends started getting married, and people also said the same thing. They said, once we are off the market, the good men are over and that once we picked our wives the good women are over don't believe that lie listen to this very very carefully what i'm about to say now is going to bless you i'm not just going to talk about no i'm going to talk about anything hear this nothing is too difficult to find if you understand these three things hear it again nothing is too difficult to find if you understand these three things number one know what you are looking for there is nothing that is too difficult to find love life leading anything if you know what you're looking for one number two you know the right place to look to number three you have the purchasing power oh if you get what i've just said it will change not only your love life it will change your life forever when people tell me it's difficult to get a house in this city or it's difficult to get um, a good hotel in this city or it's difficult to get good food in this city, I travel a lot. So I get to different cities, different countries, different times. And I've had that everywhere. Oh, it's very difficult. When I plant a church somewhere, we say, it's very difficult to get people here. Oh, very difficult. Uh, it's very difficult to get a good restaurant in this city you are in. I don't think you can get. It's very difficult to get good food here. Oh, it's very difficult. It's always a lie. Look, look. My family and I on vacation, we have eaten amala, hot amala on an afternoon in Houston, Texas. The kind of place I, I, I don't even want to tell you this story. When we walked in there, son of mine took me there, took us there in Houston. When we walk in there, we stop being in America. It's like, yes, this is mushy. Because, don't tell anybody, when we walk into that restaurant in Houston, Texas, they are selling Agbo there. Did you hear me? Agbo Jedi. I couldn't believe it. My family and I were in Dubai, and I told them, I said, a friend of mine, Pastor Yemi Yemi, took me to one restaurant in Dubai. It's the best African restaurant I've ever eaten in. I'm saying that publicly. The best. The ambience, the atmosphere, the excellence, the food, up are powerful. But everybody will tell you it's difficult. There is nothing difficult to find. Why? You must know what you're looking for. Two, you must know the right place to look. Three, you must have the purchasing power. So let's come back to love. Number one thing is that, do you even know what you are looking for? You know Genesis 2.28 says, For this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother and cleave to his wife. So what you should be looking for, and it is looking for, because Proverbs 18.22, it says, Hey, that find it. You can't find what you are not searching for. So when it comes to who you marry, you look, you look. I'd love to say that who you marry is the only prayer you don't close your eyes to pray. Don't close your eyes. You open it wide. God forbid. Umba, umba, umba. 
to be about on no magic. You know, you open your eyes when you are praying, if you are looking for something, what are you looking for? A wife. So it's not marriage that makes you a wife. No, it's because you're a wife that you have found. Les Brown said, when the student is ready, the teacher will show up. I put it like this. When the pregnant woman is ready, her husband will show up. So what I'm trying to say to you, do you even know what you're looking for? The Bible said for this course shall a man. Is it a boy you got or a man? You must be looking as a lady for a man. As a man, you must be looking for a wife. He that findeth a wife, findeth good and obtaineth favor from God. And God is the one that will give the favor if you get it right. So be careful. Make sure you get the man. A man, make sure you got a wife. Not just a babe. Not just a fine girl. Not just statistics. Not just booze and all that. No, 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 no. Make sure you get a man. And man, make sure you get a wife. So you need to know what you're looking for. Nothing is difficult to find. Number one, if you know what you're looking for. Number two, if you know the right place to look. You see the problem? Where I come from, I'm a Yoruba man from Nigeria, West Africa. We have a proverb that the wife you met in the place of dance, it is true dance, true dance you will lose her. You met her in the place of dance, so she saw you dance and she was attracted to you. That is how you will lose her when she sees other people dancing too and she gets attracted to them. Where are you looking? You see, you are looking for a good wife and you are spending all your time in the nightclub. You are spending all your time in the wrong places. They are not there. So somebody came to me one time and said, but Reverend, you know when you say things like that, that is why bad boys come to church to look for wife. And then when they marry the wife, I said, no, no, no. This is what happened. The Bible says in Proverbs 17 that just like face answer to face in the mirror. That is how the art of man to man. So it's good for you to come to church to look for wife. Where else you go to? Church is the best place to look for wife. Church is the best place to look for husband. But if that is the only reason you come, you are about to be shocked. Because just like there are men that come to church to look for a wife, there are wives that come to church to look for a husband. So if that is the reason both of you come and your heart will communicate one another, you will marry one another. One month after the wedding problem we start. Ah bro, I thought I met you in the choir. What of you? Are you not in protocol? problem has started. Don't come to church just to look for a wife or a husband. Come to church to look for God. But if you get God, you will get God's children. Did you get what I'm saying? If you get God, you get God's children. But the best place, where the best materials are, are in church. So number one, you know where you, what you're looking for. Number two, you know the right place to look. Number three, do you have the purchasing power? This is where I need to talk to some people. You know, um, you are saying, ah, oh God, I want to marry a king. I want to marry a king. Are you a queen? You have to be a queen to attract a king. You see, some of you, the kind of man you are believing God for, if God gives you that kind of a man, God will be punishing the man. <laughs> some of you, the kind of a woman you are believing God for, if God gives you that kind of a woman, you are punishing the woman. So you wrote your list, oh, you want to marry, I want him to be spiritual, I want him to, to have a good job. Are you spiritual? Do you have a good job? Are you relational? You see, this is what I've discovered. If you get this, you've gotten love right. You become what you want to attract. Let me say that again. That does happen to me every stage of my life. Once I want new friends around me, I don't go after those new friends. I just become, start to reason like the reason. Read the books they read, dress the way they dress, go to play they go to. They are attracted to me naturally. You become what you want to attract. So if you want to marry a queen, then become a king. I want to marry a queen. I want to marry a king. Become a king because a queen will not see a pizza. A queen will see a king. It does not matter what the king is wearing. The king might be wearing tatas and dirty dresses but the queen will recognize the king in the kid so i'm trying to say to you number one you know what you're looking for number two you know where to look number three you have the purchasing power so true love it's a lie that true love is hard to find true love is not hard to find if you get these three basics and nothing in life actually is hard to find if you get these three bases number eight lie love lie True love wins after marriage. Have you heard that before? Somebody said, well, you know, true love is like, uh, love is like chewing gum. When you marry, it's a lot of sugar, little gum. But the more you chew, the more it becomes more gum, little sugar. 
until you spew it out. I don't believe so. I, I've been married 22 years, man. And I don't believe so. That is also a lie. You see, this is where the problem comes in. You need, Bible said, when you take fire and uh, wood out of the fire, the fire will go out. What people don't understand is love in marriage needs maintenance. Love in marriage needs maintenance. Let me explain that to you. You know, even for love that is made in heaven, maintenance is on earth. Somebody might need to type that and to help some people. For love made in heaven, maintenance is on earth. Even the love is made in heaven. We have to maintain it here. I explained you one time, I said, driving the marriage car, the love car, is not automatic gear. It is manual. It can't be automatic. You see, the thing with manual is that you sit down, you are you bless crutch, you are just the gear, based on where you are or if you are sending a slope or, or, or something. So I'm trying to say to you that what the thing is why it looks as if love went after marriage is because many a times you are not ready to do what you did before marriage. You remember before marriage when you're going to his house or house, you wear your best, you do your best. You take your last money to take one another house. You take your last money to buy gifts for one another. So I say, well, but you know, I'm trying to woo at that time. No, there must be continuous win. You don't stop what you started before marriage now because you are married. You got to keep on giving gifts. You got to keep on writing notes. You got to keep on saying sweet nothings. You got to keep on giving time. You see, the problem with men is that men are hunters, and the problem with hunters is that once they get what they went after to hunt, they look for something else to go and get. That is not the way to do it. If as Solomon said, the proof of laziness is to get something you want and not be able to prepare it. So I'm trying to say that it is a lie that love wins after marriage. No, it's just that love needs maintenance after marriage. True love is like wine. The longer, the better. You see, I've been to some restaurant before they bring out the wine. They said 1928, the Brunel. Oh my God! When people hear the year, then they go wild. So that is what love is to be like. The longer, the better. Today we are talking about love lies and demystifying them. We are telling you that, you see, don't believe the lie. There are so many lies where love is concerned, but that is what they are. They are love lies. You need to know the truth and say it to your children and say it to people around you. Number one lie we talked about is that marriage is to be endured, not enjoyed. And we discovered that it's also you need to enjoy your marriage. Don't just endure it. Of course, there will be one or two things that you might need to endure. Maybe it's not. Oh yeah, so mess no. <laughs> or maybe she fats, don't tell anybody. But but you see the book of marriage, the way God is God says it's not good for man to be alone. So which means marriage is meant to be with goody goodies. Number two lie is that if you love me, you sleep with me, though we are no married. No, no, love is for after marriage. After you're married, you see, and it's very interesting. I came to my church one day and I said to them, I said, You people, I don't like the way you are treating me. When do you want me to rest? Eh? Before you marry, I'm shouting, don't sleep together. Don't sleep. Well, well, guys, don't don't sleep together. Hear me. Don't sleep together. Now you are married. I'm shouting, sleep together. Sleep together. Sleep together. Three times a week, sleep together. So it is like, whoa, that young guy can't believe that we have for each we have After you've been married for a while, your spouse will tickle you at night. You pretend as if you are dead. Not that you are asleep. Dead. <laughs> but don't do it before you marry. And number three lie is that there is nothing like love at first sight. It's love with insight. Love at first sight does not work in anything. You don't see a car at first sight and say that is a car I love. You want to check the engine. You want to ask questions. You don't see a B out. They offer you a house and say at first sight that's the house I'm going to live in. No, you check it. So it's love with insight. Then with the discover number four lie is that in-laws are the major problem in marriage it is not in-laws some in-laws may behave like outlaws but it is left to you to protect the garden god had given to you to every garden of eden there will be a serpent in the midst of every 12 disciples there is a judah so it does not matter that there are in-laws that are outlaws it depends on the two of you not to allow the in-laws to destroy your marriage number five lie is that true love never fights that is a lie we have disagreement 
covenant in love. We don't abuse one another, but we don't always agree. Two people always agree, only one of them is doing the thinking. Number six lies and loyal true love is for compatibles. No, most of the time, true love is from for opposites, male and female created in them. Opposites are trapped. It's not only a law of magnetism, it's a law of life. That is why sometimes the true love is between a man that says, if the light is off, I can't sleep. And a woman that says, if the light is on, I can't sleep. A man that says, I want my food very hot. And the wife that says, I want my own cold. So it's very important. That is how life is. But we've got to find a way to make it work. Number seven lie is that true love is hard to find and i told you that is a lie three things there is nothing too hard to find if you know these three things know what you're looking for know the right place to look have the purchasing power when it comes to love know what you're looking for know before you start the kind of a wife you want i wanted a wife that is that will love me that will be a good mother for my children that will be a good first lady for my ministry and my calling and my vision i wanted a I don't want a fire extinguisher. You know that some people we call fire extinguisher? They extinguish your fire. I don't want that. I want somebody that will foil my fire. Somebody said the hunting is greater when both of you are hungry. I want somebody as hungry for God as I am. So I knew what I was looking for. Number two, I knew the right place to look. And number three, come on now, I have the purchasing power. I have what it takes to attract her. Let me tell you a secret. Don't tell TJ I told you. You know how I met TJ? I met TJ because some people around me wanted to marry her and she kept on saying no. And I went to talk to her. What is your problem? Why this guy that is very handsome and um, is proposing to you, you are saying no. That, that's how we became close actually. Everybody wanted her. But you know the truth? I have the purchasing power. Come on now. Okay, let's, let's stop kidding. No, my eight lies that when people say, what well, marry somebody the love will win. It's a lie. True love is like wine. The longer the better if but you need to maintain it even for marriages made in heaven maintenance is on that number nine lie is that true love is solo me and my husband me and my wife the world can die it does not work like that you see it's very interesting that i discover when um about marriage very it is when i chose to marry tj i wasn't just choosing for myself a wife I was choosing for my three brothers a sister. I was choosing for my choosing for my dear mother a daughter. I was choosing for my dear father a daughter. I was choosing for my unborn children a mother. I was choosing for my young ministry a first lady. I was choosing for my friend a friend. I was joking, I put something up on social media that went wild and went viral. I said, look, if you are because of this lockdown, you are fighting and you are thinking you are going to divorce. It's a lie. You can't divorce. Because we bought a Shebi. We traveled but for to come to your wedding. We wasted time counseling you. We stayed in hotels. We give you gifts. If you want to divorce, we have to sit down and you have to refund our investment. <laughs> I beg, we are co-investors. Ah, we are co-investors in your marriage. Yo. <laughs> it's not your decision to make. It's our decision to make. We we contributed by time with time, with actually with money, with everything. I mean, you think it's that 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 easy? Or well, somebody told me that she traveled to the north for the wedding. They said they want to. No, 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 no. So I'm trying to say to you that look, we are co-investors. So I'm trying to say marriage is not solo. It can't be just about you alone. Sincerely, don't shut the world out because you are now married. Especially ladies. A lot of ladies, once they get engaged like this, all their friends are not engaged and no go area. You see, that is stupid. And a lot of ladies do that too. I don't know where you hear that from, that once you are married, all your single ladies can't be your friend again. This is, I, I, I had a daughter that um, was like that. No, I'm not married now, all my friend. Mm. Until when she had a baby. And she needed somebody to help her. And her mom was not around. All the married women can't leave their husband's house to come and stay with you because you are their friend. She needed to rely on the single friends. I'm trying to say to you, you can't go solo just because you are married. You can't. Your marriage is a priority, but you need other people, especially your pastor, if he's a good pastor. Somebody to counsel you when there is trouble. Somebody to cool your head when you are when you have hot temper. Listen to me very carefully. Even cancer is no longer terminal if it is discovered early. Yes, cancer is no longer terminal if it is discovered early. The same thing with marriage. Many a times when people tell me about their marital problem, it has become 
Yam pepe scatter scatter. I think I get that right. BB and Tabiara will tell me after if I got it right. Yam scatter. I think so. Something like that. Okay. They 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 they've told talk to to healers. They've talked to friends. They've talked to lawyers. The the thing had become terrible. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. It's become messed up. If you tell me early before he went to that level, maybe you would have saved the marriage. So I'm trying to say, true love cannot just go so low and cut down everybody, cut down your in-laws, cut down your friend, your siblings, cut down your siblings. Cut. That is just stupid. Because one day you will need people. And when you need them, it's not the time to look for them because nobody likes to be used. Very important. And finally, number 10. is a lie that I can marry anybody and make it work. I used to believe that lie. I thought I was gentle enough and good enough to marry just anybody and make it work you can you see the problem with life is that your your preference changes the food i used to love when i was a teenager i didn't love it when i was in my 20s the food i used to love in my 20s didn't really love some of them in my 30s and 40s and the kind of things i eat now now if you had told me in my 20s i'll eat them i would tell you you are dreaming you are a joker that is why I needed God. I needed God to lead me to who to marry. See, we are all God's children. But it's God that knows the person that suits you. It's God that knows. I don't believe in the funny lie that one man, one woman from heaven, God that joined us together. I don't believe in that. That's somebody you don't believe. In, I don't believe in that. Uh, my mom used to pray, uh, you won't carry another person's bone. I said, no, 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 no. Let me explain that to you. That can't be so. If God that joined us together from heaven, what happened to the people that died early? That means that their spouses will be left hanging. Because God had joined everybody together from heaven. What happened to the folks that didn't get born again? The Bible said God wished that all men would be saved. But not all men are saved. So if God had joined us from heaven, the other person refused to be saved and God will not force him or her. Does that mean I'll marry a non-believer? What happened to people that marry and their spouse die? And the Bible said they can marry again. If God had joined us together from heaven, if you lose your spouse, he won't allow you to marry. Except there are spare power spouses. I don't believe that. This is what I believe. When you get born again, God knows somebody that is, you see, Genesis 2.28, Amplified said, he that is suitable, adaptable, and complete. Once you get married, God knows the person that is suitable, adaptable, and complete you, and God will start to move you together. God will start to order your steps together. I'm trying to say you need God where your marriage is concerned. You can't just marry anybody and make it work. Two good people can marry and it didn't work. I've seen that. I've seen two very lovely. I'm a pastor. I, I can't sell, I can't sell celebrities. I can't sell kings i can't say politicians i've seen two very good i can't say pastors two very good people get married and you never were and, and and you wonder what is happening here you will need the god factor so if you're listening to me today or you're watching me and you don't have god in your life you need god not only to make heaven but to make your home heaven so if you're listening to me i want to pray with you i want you to give your life to jesus i took the same decision as a teenager i've never regretted it look i'm close to my 50 now and i never regret taking that decision to give my life to Jesus. All you need to do is to say you accept him. Let's pray together. Bow down your heads with me. If you're giving your love to Jesus, say, Lord Jesus, I give my life to you. You die for me. I want to live for you. Thank you for paying the price. From today, I will live for you. I'm now born again in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for praying that prayer with me. Look for a, for, a, for a living church around you and attend. And if you're in any city where you're for assembly, we're in everywhere, Abuja, Poraco, Lagos, um, Toronto, Canada, everywhere. Just look for travel assembly somewhere close to you and make sure you worship with us. I love you.